Yes, Rovers made it to safety. Swindon showed why they're still on that promotion trail, but Bristol City missed their chance to join them. And I'm afraid disgraceful punching by two spectators led to Swindon's Dave Bamba being knocked to the ground as he tried to leave the field at the end of the match. Pictures in a moment of Bamba being assaulted. Bamba told me afterwards he was attacked by two people virtually at the same time. Now, surely soccer at FA League and players' union levels must take action, or one day a player might be seriously damaged. There was some aggravation towards the end of the match. Lou Macari of Swindon there, and John Trollope, his assistant, attacked by someone in the crowd, and a law officer sorts that out. But at the end of the match, well, as hundreds of uh, spectators were on the field, watch middle left, top left of picture, and watch the arrow. Bamba's in a white shirt. There's a spectator in a green top. And there is the assault on him there. Coming now, there's Bamba, attacked from one side, punched from the uh, other to the ground, and he tumbled down to the ground there. And uh, that's not very nice indeed, is it? Well, now, the crucial match which had gone before was full of interesting football for the biggest West Country crowd of the season. City had to win if they were to reach those playoffs. At the start, Ashton Gate was indeed a picture. 19,000 people on a lovely sunny day. And they saw Andy Llewellyn's strong run from the back for City set up an important chance. Good work by the defender going all the way. Calderwood's attack is heavy there. Free kick it was. And Morgan's lovely diving header has the ball in the Swindon net. And City celebrate a vital breakthrough. City, of course, needed that second goal to be sure. And Gary Marshall very nearly had it. Only the crossbar denying him then. Well, Swindon were under the collar at this time, and next it's Rob Newman attacking them. Fine shot, super save by Fraser Digby. In the second half, Swindon improved. And uh, a few anxious moments developed in the City defence. And Joe Jordan's header across his own box gives Coyne a chance. He cashes in. However, fate was to give City another chance they were to be given a penalty it was a controversial decision some thought a lucky decision but city got it for parking impeding the falling jordan there city management want, wanted mcphail or newman to take the kick but owen took it upon himself to take it and he missed a vital miss indeed well with time running out city pressed desperately but swindon were determined not to lose to the local rivals and mark jones got that one off his line finally it was uh, newman's excellent effort again a fine shot from the number two but that inspired swindon goalkeeper fraser digby had the last word well so near and yet so far at the death then terry yeah very disappointing um especially that we had you know we had the chance we had a penalty and uh, i suppose if you're cruel if you don't score penalties you don't deserve to win but having said that, I thought it was a superb team performance. I thought we, uh, we started where we left off at Walsall. We were committed. Uh, we had enough pressure to win three games. We um, created enough chances to win three games. But they, they, uh, they defended well. The keeper was uh, on good form as well. Indeed, Fraser Digby's goalkeeping impressed Dave Sexton, England's under-21 manager who was there. And Digby now becomes favourite to play for England in France next month.